Well, we're a long way from Norfolk today. We've come a couple of hundred miles across country, due west, into Worcestershire. And we're here to fish a lovely little river that starts its life high in the hills of mid Wales. It's called the Team. And by the look of it from here, it's absolutely in lovely condition, although it has been very, very high lately. But I think I've been lucky. I've got a day when it's fining down nicely. Some beautiful trees around here. Ashes, willows, oaks, sycamores, maples. And there's quite a few alders along the banks of the river too. The earth here is so red, it's absolutely thick. No wonder this river goes, as they say locally, blood red in flood. And after a fish today, which has proliferated in recent years throughout the lovely little river team here, and that's the barbel. Apparently there's lots of them. And I bet they don't half go in this fast water. God, that's rocketing along. Here we are. Well, we're quite high up here. You can see that the river in flood probably ends up this far up the bank. It's a beautiful stretch of water. It's very pretty. There's huge beds of Himalayan balsam along here and sedges along, along the far bank there. It really is a lovely stretch. I don't know whether to go up or down. I think I'm going to go downstream. That looks beautiful, full of character down there between those trees. Let's give that a go. The nice thing about this stretch of river is that it's miles from nowhere and it's a place anyone can fish simply by joining the Birmingham Anglers Association. This is just one of a hundred venues that they've got to offer anyone who buys a club membership. I'm surprised to find that there's actually no one on the river, probably because it's midweek. Well, there's a fair old flow through there, but those barbel won't half go. See if we can get down here. I'm going to have to be careful here because it's very slippery and this red earth is absolutely lethal. As the river's been in flood, you've got to be careful you don't slide on it. It's really up and down this through here. Lovely lush countryside in this part of Worcestershire. It's really beautiful. This is a lovely looking spot here. Take it careful. Oh, look at that. You can tell how high the river's been with all the, the old flotsam and jetsam caught on the branches. That means it's been this high in recent weeks, six, seven feet where it, above where it is at the moment, and it's still dropping slightly. This looks like a lovely run here. That's beautiful. A lot of weed along this bank, long beds and then there's a nice deep run on the far bank on those alders. I think I'm going to start by putting a drop of hemp seed along that bank. If there's any barbel there, they'll soon find it. It's good attractor hemp for barbel wherever you go. At least in small rivers you can centralise the shoals by putting in pulpfuls of hemp. Now that's really belting through there, so I'm going to put that well upstream and hope to, to group some fish along, along the far bank in the downstream run there. The hemp really gets the barbel rooting about. That ought to do to start off with. Well, I've got a heavy fixed pattern oster and feeder rig made up here. I would have liked to have trotted this river today but the current is so incredibly strong now that I'm actually sitting down here I can see how strong it in fact it is and it's no good trying to float fish. Barbel like a fairly static bait they're not going to chase it so I've got a fixed pattern oster of about 20 inches with a 14 hook, a couple of casters, a couple of maggots and having catapulted the hemp in I'm going to put some maggots and casters in the feeder. Might top it up with a little more hemp too, just for luck. There we are. The thing about feeder fishing, you need to cast consistently. And to stand up for this, I need to get it in that little gap over the other side there. That's lovely, close to the trees. Because if, if the barbel are going to be holding there, that's where they're going to be. Just off the main flow. I hope I've got the rod rest right here because this is not an easy swim to fish it's really belting through much much quicker than i thought well that's okay and we might get one or two 
drop backs here as the feeder lightens and the bait comes out of it and the, it swings in. But if we get a barbel bite, we're going to know it. In this sort of current, barbel just don't mess about. They come up, grab the hook bait, and invariably head across the current. Now that's just coming back and reset them. And then if they head downstream with it, well, the rod just goes over. You don't really have to strike, just gently lift into them. This particular stretch gets fairly well fished at weekends by club anglers, and so the necessity for light tackle is paramount, really. I'd like to sit it out with a Cuba lunch you meet and do the sort of tactics I might do at home on the Wensum, and indeed, later on in the day, I'm, I'll probably try that. But I'm going to do the matchman's approach to start off with, light tackle, feeder rig, and we'll go from there. It's, it's lovely, actually, fishing a completely new river for the first time. It really is. It's got bags of character, this little river. It's so fast and all these trees. There's lots of exciting swims down there that I'm looking forward to explore. But uh, this is a particularly nice run here. I've got a barbel feeling over the back end there. But, uh, this is the sort of place. I'm going to have a half a dozen fairly rapid casts, but even if I don't get bites, just to get a carpet of bait down there, because I don't think catapulting the hemp in is quite enough. And then perhaps if there's any barbel there, they'll move over it. A lot of people on these sort of rivers, they give it an hour to get a carpet of feed down there, and if the barbel don't move over the hemp and the, the castles and maggots, it's time to move. And that's a good way of playing these little rivers, really. Well, that big feeder's holding out there nicely. Don't like fishing too heavy, even though you've got this fast current. And the only way to beat it, of course, is to have the, the rod really up high. Come on, you barbel. Thought I had a little tiny tremble then. No, could have been a minnow or a gudgeon. Hello, now that was a little tremble. That's the sort of thing you get as a barbel comes across the line and sometimes it picks the line up on its petrol fins just before it's going to... Hello, yes, we're in. Go oh, that didn't I pull that rod round. No, I don't think it's a big fish. Got this current, doesn't it? Go, I'm really pulling this. It's amazing. I can't go too heavy because I've only got a, a light hook link on that one. Up you come. Come on, come to Johnny. I don't think this is very big at all. When I first hit it, I thought it was a good fish, but it's it's keeping down a bit. A lot of weep. And, oh, no, it isn't. It's a small one. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing how they pull in this current. Come on, you little devil. He's trying to get into that wee bed <laughs> under me rod tip. <laughs> oh, it's a lively little fish. <laughs> come on, here you come. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> well, I don't know for a tiny little barbel. That really did go well. Look at you. <laughs> oh, it's got some strength in it, these, these fish. Look at that one. Oh, that's lovely. They're beautiful fish. Look at that. Well, you're not very big, my son, but you're my... First team barbel. Look at the lovely, huge, great, powerful fins he's got. Incredible. Lovely long whiskers. Lovely little fish. An absolute perfect little barbel. Let's put you straight back. Not important getting the keeping it out for you. Oh, steady on. Unbelievable strength. They're so wiry, these fish. So wiry. <laughs> great. Ooh, where you go?
<laughs> Heading straight downstream. It's nice having a cool walk through these vines before I mosey on down to the next swim. It's funny, a lot of people tend to think that uh, only the fields of Kent produce hops and beer, etc. But here in Worcestershire, it's, it's quite a big business. Mmm, I love the smell of fresh hops. I wonder what brewery that's on its way to. So very tall through here, much taller than I imagine. It might be nice later on if we have a look and see how these tall vines are harvested. It's really hot out in this field now that I've left the hops back there and it's turned into a an absolute scorcher of a day. They look like weeds in this field, but there's a bit of everything here. There's some kale, there's some docks and all the old seeds of it. There's some nip bone there, lovely little purple flowers. Some knotweed. There's one or two old cabbages there from a previous harvest, I think. Thistles. <laughs> Now, which way is the river? Right, well, I think it's this way. This looks like a nice little swim down here, below the rapids. It's very bright, but uh, I do like these fast water swims. And there's a nice eddy here that comes immediately on my own bank, down from where the rapids come in. Oh, it's bright. It's creeping here a bit. Oh. oh, that's lovely. Beautiful little waterfall up there. And on this side piece, it comes rocketing through the middle. I've got a lovely slow back eddy here that looks very barbly and very chubby. The barble in this river definitely responds to hemp and cast, so there's no doubt about it. But then equally, as everybody who fishes it tends to feed them hemp and castor, probably. Lunch and meat worm, the sort of approach, even sweet corn. Small dead fish might even tempt the bigger barbel. There's lots of ways you can do it. So we've just only got one day on the river. I'm going to keep with the matchman's tackle and see how we go. That's a little bit further out now, and that's bumping nicely as that's coming round. This feeder tends to empty quite quickly, so I don't want to cast it too far across the current, because by the time it comes into where I want it to settle, it will put a bait across the entire river, and I want it to come out immediately downstream of where the hook bait is. That's lovely. It's got to be fish in this one. Got to be fish. It's one of the most delightful swims I've ever sat in. It's got everything. It's got the sound of water, visually beautiful. It's got a lovely current, lovely surface current pattern. Oops, hello, a little twitch then. Yes! Hello, what's this? It's a good start. I don't think it's a barbel. It's not really pulling that much. It's probably a chub. I don't know, though. It's deceptive, that current so strong. It's a good fish, anyway. My local river, Wensum, the, the flow isn't normally as strong as this, so it's a little bit difficult for me to estimate what these are. What is it? Oh, let's get, let me get under that weed bed. Oh, it's a chub. It's not as big as I thought, either. Come on. Ah, <laughs> uh, gotcha. Oh, that's a good start in this swim, isn't it? Mm. Let's have a look at you. Oh. Mm. About two, two and a half pounds. Whoops, careful. The hook's only just in, too. It's a nice looking fish. He's got leaf on him there. Beautiful colour, chub. Lovely bronze back and Orangey red fins, lovely fish. I don't think I'll bother with the net. I think I'll put this one straight back. Ooh. 
Away you go. It's funny, I like watching fish go back. It's uh, something I've always enjoyed doing. Well, I think we're very lucky on the fishing the river yeah, team here, yeah. being here yeah. at hot picking yeah. time. Yeah, great too. Because I've, I've got you, haven't I, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> this is Joe Evans, and they tell me that yeah. you've actually been hot picking here coming for 60 years. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, near enough. Yes. They also tell me you've got more grandchildren than Everton and Manchester United put together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that true as well? Can you tell me what they're actually doing now? Yeah. They're just cutting the, they're, um, yeah, they're cutting, the vines down. Yeah, they're, they're cutting them off and they're pulling them. Yeah, what, string as well? Yes. And then this then gets lorried back to the, yeah. the, the factory, back, yes, does it? Back to the yeah. back to the machine. How long does it take for, for, for the hops to grow? Oh, well, they're on them. They, well, they're on them. As soon as they finish here, now they start cutting, and then they start on with them again. Like do they? Yeah. So it's an ongoing thing, really? It's all going on yeah, the time, all the time. Like, yeah. 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 Well, here we are. We're in the middle of the bay at the moment, where they actually string up the vines as they come in from the fields. And these then go on a conveyor belt on their way up to the shelling place there. Boy, it's ever so noisy around here, but it smells absolutely beautiful. There's so much going on too. The vines, as they're called, are taken up onto pulleys and then entered into a, an enormous great big flailing machine which beats the hops off the vines. The hops then go on a conveyor belt for the next stage, whilst the vines themselves end up as compost. They're never put back on the hop fields themselves, although I think they're used on potatoes and other crops. This is the next stage in the process where the green hops are brought through th from the conveyor belts and spread out in this enormous great big kiln. I think there's up to about four bales worth here, eventual bales worth anyway. And they're dried in here for 10 hours at about 140 degrees and then they're left to cool for a further six and then they're taken out to the loading bay to be pressed into bales. So a lot of hops here, guys. <laughs> yeah. A lot of beer? Yes, a lot of beer too. Well, here we are. This is uh, apparently the final stage where all the, the fully dried hops are now put down into this chute and compressed into bales. It's a beautiful smell in here. I think I could get drunk if I worked in here all day. <laughs> it's not a bad way to go, though, is it? <laughs> Well, that's been a very interesting little look around, but of course, what's even nicer is this, the finished result. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, well, it's a bit precarious here. Well, I've got all the gear set up under this enormous, great big alder tree above me, and I've oh, <laughs> got a cushion set high up here. I can't get down there because it's too deep, but this is a lovely spot to fish this swim. It comes under this willow where there's a lot of bottom weed, and then it belts through over the back there underneath that enormous, great willow, and there's a, oh, a 40-yard run there. It looks like a 
a lovely swim. I didn't think that other swim would produce any more after that small barbel, so we've skirted the, the hop field. And here we are, right in the middle of the spinny, and props the, the densest part of this piece of river. It's beautiful and overgrown along here. I love these little spots. Feel as snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> Fishing here. Just missed that willow, right in the middle of the river. Let that come down. Probably about six foot deep, counting that feeder down there. Again, I've had to put the rod up very high here because the flow is still very, very strong, incredibly strong. What I'll do to start off with is have quite a few frequent casts to put some bait down on the bottom, a nice big carpet of casters. I've got some casters, maggots and hemp. I think I'll catapult a drop of hemp out into the middle there, fairway upstream. Keep my eye on that rod tip because if a barbel does lunge at that, it's uh, it's good night nurse, the old rod could go flying in. I've had that happen on more than one occasion, turn round and seen the rod cartwheeling along the bank. I have a little tiny twitch. No. This is a lovely spot here, it's really beautiful. It's carpeted in some of the tallest Himalayan balsam here that I've seen for a long, long time. Some more in front of me here, and there's sedges all along the, along the bank, and there's some greater bind weed down there. Really is a very, very picturesque spot, this. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Too hot, if anything. Sometimes when it's been a little bit cloudy, you get the sun poke through and Oh, oh yes, here we are. <laughs> it's a good fish. Look at the way that went. Do you know that? I'd only just settled. I was just going to sit back and take it easy. And... Oh, oh, wow. That's a sizzler. That's going right down to the end of the swim there. I'm going to have to be very careful with this because there's an enormous, great, big, thick bed of sedges under my own bank. Keep this rod out all the time. That's another barbel. <laughs> come on, up you come. Up you come. He's just hanging there, this fish. He doesn't want to... There he goes. He's coming now. Just didn't want to come upstream, that one. Strange. A lot of barbel you hook, they, they head upstream right from the start. I don't want it to go too far up there because it might get in that weed under that willow there, so... Perhaps it's the best place for it, is fighting it downstream here. There he goes again. Ooh. Steady with this one. This is a really good fish. Oh, careful now. Just as he nears the edge, I've got to be so careful with it. Yep, he's coming. Mouth up, there he is. Oh, gotcha. Whoa, what an incredible fight that was. Oh, let's see how big you are. Oh, yes, that's a lovely fish. Lovely fish. Oh, still got some power. Look at those chops. How on earth that... <laughs> how on earth that 16 hook ever held in that? I just... <laughs> I just don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's better. It's got to be a good... Six, six and a half pounds, look at that. You've got lovely long whiskers. <laughs> well, this is what we came to catch. What a lovely fish to end the programme with. Mm -hmm.